is Mick Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL, and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. Wrestling fans, I'm Dan Marotti, joined by... Bruce the Kid, Big Cake in the house! Unbelievable fans, it is WWE Payback Sunday. Oh, yeah. I am so happy to have this gentleman with us. We're going to be producing some very uh, thought-provoking content from some of the great times in professional wrestling. Who needs sports entertainment in 2020 when you have these great memories and legends we can relive from what I consider the greatest period of wrestling back in the late 1980s. Before we get there, though, Brutus, uh, we kind of wanted to give fans a little sample of what's going on. I know, for those that might not await, want to wait until we plow through this series on video, your book has been one of the more popular wrestling autobiographies that's been released in quite a while now. Well, in my opinion, it's the best. The best of the best. It's the best of the best. Brutus Beefcake Strutting and Cutting. BrutusBeefcake.com. You can... Get it 24 7 right brutusbeefcake.com have it shipped right to your home uh, again as we noted earlier in the week we would love to have a virtual signing later in the year maybe closer to the holiday season so not only can you get the book you can get it uh, inscribed and personalized and shipped right to your home uh, from what I've, I've only read a little bit of it a couple of chapters so far but it's fantastic I've enjoyed the read so far and I bet you've received a lot of positive feedback from the fans um, unbelievable I haven't received any Negative feedback. That's the kicker. Lots of positive. Good. No negative. Really good. I think the one problem you're going to run into, it's only one book. I think there might need to be more. <sighs> yeah. Guys, <are> right. <laughs> guys out there writing a lot of books. Uh, definitely could be a second one coming. No, Absolutely. No no Absolutely. Doubt. Especially with the response to the first. Again, at BrutusBeefcake.com, you can order yours now. Beat the Holiday Rush. Enjoy. A lot of people have a lot of free time right now with everything going on in the world with the virus. So what a way to kill a weekend, kicking back and reading the stories from WWE Hall of Famer, former tag team champion, former WrestleMania co-main eventer. Hey, WrestleManias were an unbelievable time. Uh, it's hard to even describe it. You know, people can't really know, know what it was like. You know, the excitement. You know, we were... Uh, on uncharted ground, you know, we're out there and uh, paving the way, making it so everybody else could uh, slide on in and make some serious dough. Well, you were in the first six, and then after your unfortunate accident that was 30 years ago this summer, you went on to be in the co-main event at WrestleMania 9. So that's a hell of a resume in and of itself without anything else you did in between. Well, the first ones, I believe, were all the best ones. And... Uh, Definitely the hardest ones, no question about it. Without those, the, the, with the other ones, probably would have never happened. So, you got to look at it many ways. Well, with our goal long term with this series, is with the support of the great fans at home, is to continue to have you back again and again and just break down these great time periods where you were in World Wrestling Federation, later WCW. I don't know. Uh, sometimes the fan response to the WCW days are mixed with what went on in that crazy company, but I mean, decades worth of experience into this man's belt, uh, and we want to share those stories right here on Wrestling Insiders. Brutus, uh, the episodes we're going to tape today, they're going to be released uh, in chunks during upcoming WWE pay-per-view Sundays, starting off Sunday, September the 27th for the Clash of Champions show, but tonight, just to kind of give you a little preview about some of the wrestling greats we're going to be talking about, uh, not too long ago, Brutus, we lost a gentleman who we had right here in your very seat, uh, the Ugandan giant Kamala. Man, you were around at different points. He had a couple of runs in WWF. Any memories of the late, great James Harris? Uh, Big Jim was a good friend of mine. Uh, was, he's where he's solely missed. Uh, we miss him a lot. Uh, we, had, uh, we had some fun times together back, back in old, uh, the old days, say, uh, upstate New York. Back when they used to have commissions and things. And uh, Jim and I were actually wrestling each other. And uh, the commissioner was being a jerk, saying, Your blood pressure is too high. We can't let you wrestle. So I had to convince him that uh, 
he had to change his mind and let Jim wrestle. And needless to say, it happened, so we were able to have our match and everything, but some different times back then. What different was it like to, to work with a man of his size, about six foot seven, 400 pounds, but from what most of his opponents and peers describe, very smooth in the ring? Big Jim was a night off. You know, I wrestled with big guys, Andre the Giant, King Kong, Bundy, uh, you, you name it. All the biggest guys, I, I wrestled with all of them. So, you know, big guys, usually, hopefully, the best. And uh, otherwise, could you have a bad day? Yeah, well, a very tough end of life for the man having to lose his legs. We did a fundraiser here in the studio to try and raise some money for him alongside the Cauliflower Alley Club. It was a shame that he was confined to that wheelchair. It really hurt the man, you know, when you know, he felt at times maybe he could have done better in the different promotions he worked. That's a different story for a different time. You'd have to check out our, our documentary-style interview with Kamala that's available over on the Patreon. It, it was very emotional, maybe the saddest interview we've ever done here. Uh, it, it pulled on the strings of your heart. But James hopefully is in a better place right now, a place without pain. Uh, and I think his story almost highlights uh, the, the bad times a lot of the vets are going through in 2020 right now. Here we are in August when we're taping this interview. And uh, a lot of veterans that don't have, you know, legends contracts or, or such with WWE, they've gone a half a year without bookings right now. Times are tough for a lot of the guys. Yeah, there's some guys who've been vets who've been going, having a rough time for the last 10, 20 years. It's not just late, uh, recently. I mean, uh, it's it's been... It's been going on for a long time. There's so many guys who are crippled and, you know, barely getting around, barely living day by day. And, you know, now it's only making things complicated, making things worse. And if you look at just about every other form of sport, every other form of entertainment, there is that kind of protection for the guys where they have retirements and pensions and such to look forward to. Here in wrestling, you know, it's not that way. And it's a shame because... Look at the problems that some of the, the greats of the sport have developed that have led to their early demise. It's really sad. It's heartbreaking. And part of what we want to do with these series of programs, whether it's you, Marty, Tony, some of the other folks we've had in here, is to try and keep wrestling legends working. So they don't have to worry about going into the ring, sit down, have a talk show experience, share their memories with you, and keep life going in a more positive way. I think that's a great goal for any video series like this to have. It is a great goal. Anything that can be done to keep uh, guys out there working and keep them out of trouble is the main thing. You know, a lot of guys, idle hands, uh, and they, they, they wind up in trouble. And uh, so it's something that can keep guys busy, nothing but a good thing. Very important to us, as it has been for a long, long time. Well, fans, I think you're going to love the content that Brutus and I are going to be producing this fall. If all goes well, hopefully we're going to have him back later in the fall to present even more and more great content uh, to you to go along with Tony Atlas, who we have every Tuesday at 9 o'clock, and Marty Gennetti, who we have every Thursday at 9 o'clock. It's certainly a growing roster of regular superstars from, again, my favorite era of professional wrestling. I don't know about you, but, you know, I don't think the guys that are competing now in 2020 will have quite the experiences that you guys had in the 80s and 90s. Not a chance, brother. Different world. <laughs> All right, wrestling fans, Not we just chance, wanted to man. give you a little teaser uh, right after WWE Payback. We hope you enjoyed WWE's pay-per-view. I tell you, no matter what you may think of the uh, content, you have a great group of athletes giving it 100% each and every week on WWE's programming. For Brutus Beefcake, I'm Dan Marotti. We will be back Sunday, September the 27th. Right after WWE Clash of Champions, we're going to break down one of the great years, maybe Brutus's biggest year in WWF, 1988. We're going to have a lot of fun. We'll see you then. Until we speak again, folks, you and yours be well. More important, stay healthy.